Recording is going to start. Okay, the recording has just started. All right, let's pray and then we will start. Kiran, can you pray for us? Yes, sir. Father God, we just come before once again your throne, Father God. Father God, thanking you for this day, Father God. Thanking you for the class, thanking you for all the students, Father God. Father God, help us to understand the subject, Father God, and apply it to your kingdom work, Father God. Father God, lead or give more understanding and wisdom and knowledge, Father God, that can, we can receive the your word, Father God, today classes, Father God. Thanking you, Father God. Thanking you all, Father God. Uh, submitting to your hand, Father God, upcoming time, Father God, take mm -hmm. care of all. Thanking you, Father God. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So um, today uh, we're going to finish up on uh, the second section that we've been talking about, which is the spiritual aspects. Uh, we're just you know, covering a, a few things. Uh, so we will finish it up. Uh, so the class today may be short, maybe uh, we will we'll finish it soon. And uh, then next week, we'll go into another section, a new section that has to do with the personal life of a church plant or personally, how do I prepare myself if I want to start a ministry in the city, right? whether it's a, a urban church, a, a church plant, which is what we've been focusing on. But these things apply to any kind of ministry, Christian ministry uh, that we are planning to start in an urban center. How do we personally prepare ourselves? Okay, so that will be the section number three that we will get into from next week. So the plan is today we will finish up section number two, uh, which is the spiritual aspects of... Uh, church planting, urban church planting, um, or uh, starting a ministry in the city. So just to, uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, proclaiming the uncompromised gospel. This was yesterday. Uh, we talked about proclaiming the full gospel, and uh, we need to address, you know, questions that are on the minds of people. The people that we are talking to, um, the questions could be different in different places, um, you know, and uh, we need to be able to uh, uh, address those questions, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the Christian faith or about God. Uh, and so by addressing those questions, you know, we are helping them, uh, you know, relate to the gospel and then, then hear the gospel and they would then be open to it. And also thirdly, we said when we are preaching the gospel, uh, we need to address, uh, can break controlling powers, uh, address the things that are controlling the people uh, spiritually. So the, the presentation of the gospel should be in such a manner. Okay. So we stopped there yesterday. I just want to, just to touch on a couple of more things from a spiritual perspective side. So as a part of the church plant or whatever ministry, uh, you know, we are starting in the city, in the urban center. Uh, it's important that we equip the believers, equip the saints. When I mean saints, I mean the believers. Equip them to impact the community or the city. Right? So uh, this is, first of all, this is what God wants us to do uh, because he, uh, he wants every saint, every believer, to be equipped for ministry, to do something for the kingdom of God. So as a local church or as a ministry, uh, we need to think along these lines and uh, we need to work along these lines. Uh, so as a local church, it's not, um, while well, the leadership in the local church, the pastors and others uh, may be, uh, you know, doing their part in reaching out to the city, most importantly, we've equipped the saints so that they can do the work of the ministry. So here are just a few thoughts here on, on, on how, do, how to go about equipping the saints, equipping believers so that they can do the ministry. So first of all, we must teach the word of God. You know, feed the people, feed God's people with truth, uh, with uh, sound doctrine, sound teaching from the word 
so that they know what is truth and they can uphold that truth in society. So equip the people through teaching God's word, right? feeding them with wisdom and understanding. Secondly, we must also emphasize the supernatural. Uh, the Lord Jesus wanted us to do that. He wanted, he said, uh, uh, those who believe in him will do the works he did and even greater works. So that's our, we should emphasize that, you know, go out there, uh, expect God to demonstrate his supernatural power, pray for the needs of people, pray for healing, pray for miracles to take place, emphasize the supernatural, because that's the way God wants us to really impact um, the community, right? So if believers are equipped to go out there and expect the supernatural, then they, you know, wherever they go throughout the week, uh, they will expect God to work through them and demonstrate the supernatural. A third way we ex uh, equip God's people um, is uh, we equip them to be salt and light. That means how they can apply truth to wherever they are uh, during the week, which is, of course, they're going to be at home, they're going to be in the workplace. Um, so uh, they need to be able to take the truth and apply it in life situations. Uh, so that's, you know, they're being salt and light wherever they are. They're bringing about change. They're bringing about kingdom influence right where they are. You know, so uh, we have to equip people in such a way that their life itself will be the light. Their life itself will be the transforming uh, agent uh, wherever they are spending time, which is at home, in the workplace, and so on. And uh, 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 fourthly, uh, we equip people for lifestyle evangelism. That means uh, they should be ready at any time to uh, be able to share about Jesus. Right? So we equip people for that so that they could share Jesus anywhere, anytime, any place. Uh, they should have some basic skill, or basic idea. How should I share Jesus? Right? How to talk about Jesus? So if we can uh, equip people to do that, uh, you know, it will enable them to impact uh, the community throughout the city, wherever they go in the city. So our goal is then as a church, to equip, empower, and send. So we encourage people to use their gifts, their callings, wherever they, wherever God lets them and takes them, wherever they go. So this is very important from a spiritual perspective. So while we are planting a church, and you know, we talked about oh, how do you start your church and how to do, do all of that, very important as leaders or as church planters, uh, people are starting a Christian ministry that we focus on equipping the people because it's the people who are going to be able to impact widely in the communities uh, and in the city, right? So they are people who are going to make a difference. And if you don't equip the people who are coming to the local church or coming to the ministry, uh, we are missing out on a great way to bring change in the city. So this should be an important part of what we are doing, right? Equip the saints, spiritual, uh, part of our spiritual aspect. Teach the word, emphasize the supernatural, equip people to be agents of transformation, equip people to share the gospel, and empower them, send them out, support them as they go, right? The last point here in, um, uh, as far as, uh, you know, the spiritual side of things. Uh, and I, I'm just presenting this because, uh, you know, it may not be directly related to the church plant itself, but it is something very important all of us have to uh, keep in mind, which is, you know, when you go and plant a church in a city or you start a ministry in the city, uh, that one church plant or that one ministry that we are starting is not going to be able to handle the whole city, of course. Uh, so in the city, God already has many churches, many other ministries, or, or which he has you know, caused people to establish. Um, and so it's very important for us as we seek to make an impact on the city that we learn to work with other churches and ministries. 
Now, this is a spiritual aspect that we need to be part and engage with the citywide church. The citywide church is basically believers who who are belonging, who are a part of other churches, other ministries, and so on. So we are going. If we go and plant a church, or we go and start a Christian ministry, we must intentionally strength build trust and relationships with other churches and ministries in the city. Okay, this is part of the spiritual side of things. You intentionally build a trust because we are going to do this work together. Right? So build trust, strengthen relationships with other churches, you know, um, uh, build friendships uh, with other pastors, with other leaders, uh, and uh, you know, help one another, right? Strengthen and serve other churches and ministries. So, although we are we have are doing doing our own church plant, relationships are important because it takes that citywide church, all of us working together, to impact the city as a whole, right? So we look for ways to work with other churches and ministries. So, and then we uh, maintain, try to maintain, you know, a kingdom mindset. That means uh, it's not about my church plant or my ministry. It's about God's kingdom coming to our city. Now, practically, uh, you know, this is, this is challenging because, because all of us uh, have the, you know, predisposition, that means by default, we are thinking about our church, our ministry, um, and we are only responsible for that. And that is true. You know, we are immediately responsible for our church, or our ministry, what we're doing. But we need to intentionally think about God's kingdom in the city and what can we do uh, to help the extension of God's kingdom. You know, practically, uh, you know, one way, that we were doing uh, at All People's Church. Uh, this was just before the lockdown. Uh, so from 2013 uh, till um, the early part of, uh, till 20, yeah, early part of 2020, I think. Uh, we, uh, every month, uh, we used to host uh, a pastor's breakfast meeting. Uh, so this would happen on, uh, uh, the second Wednesday of every month, early morning, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., uh, we would uh, host a pastor's breakfast uh, in, 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 a, in a hotel that was in the center of the city uh, so that people could come from wherever. Uh, uh, and we just invited, you know, pastors, Christian leaders of Christian organizations just to come, just to spend time with each other. You know, no, no big agenda other than let's, be together, let's encourage each other, uh, let's learn from each other, let's talk, let's discuss, and so on. So the meeting was uh, very you know, structured that way. So we'd come, we'd spend the first hour in worship and prayer, we'd have breakfast together, and then you know we'd have discussions. So maybe sometimes somebody would talk for about 30, 40 minutes, then we would sit, you know, we'd all be sitting in round tables, uh, we would discuss in groups uh, about what we learned that day, pray with each other, uh, pray for each other. Uh, the whole, whole idea was, okay, you know, let's get to know each other because then we can trust each other. We can then, you know, when we go outside, we can work together, so on. So that was a, you know, kind of a very simple thing we started. And of course, we stopped it during the pandemic. We couldn't meet in person. Um, we probably did one or two Zoom meetings, and uh, but then it's, it's not the same, you know, as meeting in person. So we uh, we're just waiting to reopen that. Uh, hopefully, in January next year, we can restart that. The whole purpose is to be friends with other pastors, with other ministers, Christian leaders. Uh, you know, uh, and of course, you know, people are traveling and busy. But you know, when we have something regular, they know. Okay, I can come second Wednesday mornings. I can go there. I can meet with other pastors and just just for fellowship, friendship. Uh, and from there, when we're outside, we can work. We can, because we already know each other, we've spent time in prayer together. We've had food together. Uh, we've had discussions together. So when we're outside doing things, we can relate to each other much better. So so that's just a, you know, a small example where we could you know do things in the city 
in order to build friendships, because ultimately all of us working together are going to bring about a kingdom impact in the city, right? Uh, uh, it's not going to happen through just a single church plant or a single ministry. It's going to take all the churches, all the ministries who are all contributing towards uh, what's happening in the city for the kingdom of God, right? Um, and rather than us being divided and trying to fight with each other, if we can work together, then we can definitely make a big impact uh, in the city. So I thought we should put this in here as part of the spiritual side uh, that needs to be done in order to make a difference. Now, like I said, it's not easy. So we need to help kingdom a kingdom mindset uh, coming into the mind in the minds of people uh, that you know most pastors or leaders would say okay what's in it for me you know why should I come to a meeting why should I build friendships with other people or, you know what will I gain from it uh, but I think we have to change the question and say you know how will God's kingdom advance if I have friendships and relationships with other churches and ministries how can we further the kingdom of God together so that's the question we should ask and uh, that will motivate us to you know be at least have friendships with each other and then from those friendships uh, we can begin to do things together and support each other uh, uh, through the challenges uh, working in the city okay so uh, that's it you know these are the things i want to uh, you know we need to keep in mind from a spiritual perspective when you're working in the city uh, you need we need you know, to establish God's presence through praise and worship, through prayer, through intercession, through exercising our authority. We need to proclaim the gospel in a way that will be able to address the needs of the people that we are reaching. Uh, we need to equip believers so that they can then go and make a difference in the in the city. And, at this, and finally, we also need to build good relationships with other churches and ministries so that together we can be one force for God's kingdom in the city. So think about all these things. So this is a spiritual side that's involved as we are doing a work in the city, planting a church or uh, starting a Christian ministry in the city. Okay. Uh, so with that, we complete this section two, which is basically the spiritual side of um, the urban church plant. I know I've... Uh, covered this uh, uh, in a very simple way um, and uh, but uh, you know uh, uh, practicing this is really really important yeah oh um, I see your comments Prince you, you you some of you attended that pastor's breakfast meeting I I'm not sure this must have been in uh, 2000 and one time you come okay okay yeah so you know we we do that good okay any thoughts any questions okay yeah secrets comment yeah when we had a special seminar yes yeah Okay, so, you know, keep these things in mind. Uh, please try to do what you can in your cities where you work, uh, even if it means getting meeting with one other person, one other pastor, one other person from a different ministry, just building friendships with them. That it will be a big step, you know. Uh, you may not be able to gather you know, many pastors or many Christian leaders, that even if you meet with one other pastor, one other Christian leader, just pray together in your city. It's a beautiful step towards saying, look, uh, we believe in the citywide church, that God's people are in different churches and in different organizations, uh, and we're all working towards the same goal, which is thy kingdom come, you know, God's kingdom to come in the city. So I'd encourage you to do that uh, to whatever extent you can. Uh, 
you know, and just uh, see the kingdom of God come in. Okay. All right. So let's close in prayer. Uh, I know it's a short, short session today. Uh, we just uh, completed this section on uh, the spiritual side of um, uh, urban church planting. I will also work on setting up uh, uh, your midterm, your first assessment. Uh, Aaron, you have a question? Yes, uh, yeah, Pastor, I have a question. So um, is it uh, really, is it important to, if, see, suppose if we want to start a ministry or church, is it okay to work under some church leaders or some other uh, ministry? So is it okay? Because some people say that uh, some pastor and some leaders, they used to say that if you really want to start a church or, you know, a ministry, you need to work under our church or under our ministry. So is it really okay? Um, okay. So the answer to your question, Aaron, would be uh, really to do what God has put in your heart. You know, uh, there is no like right or wrong answer. It's it's you have to do what God has put in your heart. So some people, uh, when they when they want to start a church or when they want to start a ministry, uh, uh, they may work with an existing denomination or organization or church. They may do that, and that's that is what God has put in their heart to do, and that's perfectly fine. Some people may go out and start something new completely on their own. Uh, they may start a, you know, a Christian ministry or a, start a congregation somewhere. And that's fine. If that's what God has put in their heart and that's what God has called them to do, that's also fine. So either way is fine. So my answer to you would be uh, to do what God has put in your heart to do. But think about, uh, and I think that's one question we will answer in the next section, which is, uh, you know, should I work under an existing ministry or should I start on my own? So that's a part of the personal preparation. And uh, while we are not going to say which one is better, we can only say, look, this is what it takes if you're going to work under. This is what it takes if you're going to work on your own. But then eventually each one has to do what God has put in their heart, you know. So I hope that answers, addresses your question. Yeah, Pastor. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. Yeah. So I will uh, prepare your um, first assessment. Uh, it will be just simple multiple choice questions based on what we have covered. Uh, it will be open book, uh, open notes um, assessment, so just, it's easy for you to do. Uh, it'll be just a kind of a review of what we've covered, these two sections. Um, I'll put it out on the coursework, and you can just take your time to finish it, uh, uh, just finish it before the end of the semester, uh, but it's part of the assessment, and then I will, we'll have two more assessments uh, before we finish up. Okay, so let's pray, and then we'll wrap up today's class. Uh, I know it's a short section session. Uh, and next week, we'll pick up on our third section, which is personal preparation. Some of the things we need to think about when we want to personally get ready to start a church or a ministry. Okay? Fine. So somebody could pray. Prince, would you like to pray and dismiss us? Yeah. See you, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, we give, you've given us this wonder time to learn to your word. Thank you for that, Lord. Now, from your word, what we learn in your in our uh, life, Lord, will be fruitful and how we uh, spiritually prepare for your kingdom, Lord. Help us to mm. grow in you, Lord. Thank you. I pray that each of our heart should be holy, Lord. Thank you. I submit all things to you. Rest of the day, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Rowan. Thanks. Thank uh, you, Pastor. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you.
Uh, we'll continue this next week. God bless. Bye now.